What's up everyone, Mike here in the BFH garage. Today, I'm gonna cover spider gears, how to change them out, how to tell if they're good or bad. On the rack, I have a high pinion Dana 30 out of a, I think it's out of a 91 Cherokee XJ. They're pretty much all the same. Um, anyway, spider gears can get pitted, they can get worn, they need to be replaced, and I'm gonna show you how to do it, so stay tuned. Taking a closer look at this Dana 30, you can see that you have your ring gear right here, but inside this carrier are your spider gears. You have a cross pin, which holds everything in place. Then you have your side gears here, and your side gears are splined. If you look closely in there, you'll see all the splines. That's what your axle shaft goes into and engages. And then you have your other spider gears here that are smooth on the back side. They, they have a thrust washer behind them, but what it allows uh, your axles to do is rotate at different speeds. Imagine your axle spinning at the same speed as you go around a corner, the inside one would move slower than the outside one and it would chirp, the outside one would chirp as it tries to make that corner. So the purpose of spider gears are to allow one to move faster or slower than the other. Now over time, these things can become worn, pitted and whatnot. Looking at these spider gears here, they're actually, uh, they look to be in pretty good shape. Um, I went over to my scrap pile and I pulled up a spider gear and actually this is gonna be a side gear that is all pitted and we'll show you all sorts of damage here. So when you look here, you see all the pitting, all the damage that can happen to spider gears and eventually teeth can break off. So if you hear clunking in your differential, this might be the culprit, but you can clearly see all the damage there in those spider gears and that would need to be replaced. Looking at this one here, if I was just servicing this differential, I would inspect it and say, you know, I can see some very um, small areas of wear, but I'm not concerned enough yet that I would need to replace these spider gears. So all in all, those look good, but it doesn't matter because they're coming out and they're going to get replaced with an ARB air locker anyway. So let me show you the process to take these out. It's relatively simple. So in order to get your spider gears out, first you have to take your axle shafts out. That way they're not in the way and can allow these things to come out. But you have a cross pin in here and that's what holds everything together. But what holds the cross pin in? If you rotate this around, you're gonna see there's a hole right here. And what they do, it's either gonna be one of two things. It's either going to be a screw pin or it's gonna be a roll pin. And in this case here, it's a roll pin. And what they do, the, the roll pins kind of allows it to expand a little bit. And when you put it in there, um, it clamps down and it doesn't go anywhere. But you have to take this roll pin out in order to get this cross pin out. Once you get the cross pin out, then you can rotate the gears around and they'll come right out. And I'll show you how to do that. If you're lucky, you can get this changed out with the carrier still in without having to pull these ring gear bolts off. But it's a lot of work to do it that way, so why not just pull them off? Let me show you what I'm talking about. Make sure you keep your bearing caps oriented to side and which way they go on. Let's see if this carrier had any preload. Nope, not much at all. Sometimes you're gonna see a lot of preload on there and you'll have to use my wrench trick in order to get that out, but this one doesn't hardly have anything. So pull out your carrier and then you have access to everything you need right there. Now the nice thing about the Dana 30 on an open carrier, um, even if it's low pin or not, the shims go underneath the bearings. So you don't have to worry about losing shims on this one. You just wanna make sure you keep your races in the right orientation. All right, let's go and get the cross pin out. If you look right here, that's the hole that has the access to the back side of the cross pin. So we're gonna take, put our drift punch in there. We're gonna knock that pin out. Now I can tell you when you have the screw pin, that sometimes breaks and that becomes an issue. The best way to deal with that if you break the pin is you just gotta put a punch in here and you have to get a BFH and you have to hit those threads until they break and come out. Hopefully you're not uh, um, damaging the threads on the inside, but there is a likelihood that you can do that. So just be careful. With the cross pin out, I wanna set that off to the side so I don't lose it. Now here becomes an issue for you. 
as you look at where this cross pin has to come out, the ring gear teeth are up just a little bit. So you have to look at each side. This one here kind of has it blocked by two ring gear teeth. This side over here is blocked by one. And what people will do is they'll take a, a grinding disc of some sort, whether it's a Dremel or angle grinder or whatever, they put a little bevel on that one tooth so that cross pin can slide out. As you can see here, I ground down that little bit right there. Barely takes off any of that ring gear uh, tooth, but you gotta be careful, you don't wanna take too much off. Once you have that there, you take a punch or something else, just start knocking that cross pin straight across. You may need to tap it a little bit to get it out the rest of the way. And once you do that, your cross pin is free, comes out. From there, your spider gears are now free to move around. The cross pin originally was keeping them so they can rotate this way, but now that the cross pin is out, if you notice, I rotate this way and I have access to the spider gears and I can pull them out. Now make sure when you pull these out, you account for the thrust washers that go on the backside. Come around to the other side, account for that spider gear. I don't have a thrust washer, there it is. It's on the backside, so I have that one now. And then I have the side gear, it comes out of this side. And then the side gear on this side pops up and out. Now understand that these uh, side gears also have thrust washers on them. So with those out, I would clean that up really good, get some brake clean, get all that stuff good, take my new spider gears, but in this case here, I'm just gonna throw the old ones back in there, and it's just the reverse process. Make sure you keep your thrust washers where they need to go. Give a little spin. This one comes up and then gets pushed up and in this way. Again, thrust washers there. That goes that way. I'm gonna take the one on the back side. I'm gonna put that in place, and now I'm gonna to have to hold that in place while I get this one on because I need to rotate them both at the same time, and I need to make sure they're directly across from each other. If you get them off by a tooth, then it's not gonna line up. So with that being done, I'm gonna take them and go ahead and turn to get them in there. You see how this thrust washer doesn't wanna go, so I gotta kinda of make sure that I coax those in there. Same thing on the back side of this one. And then what you gotta do is get the cross pin back in. Now, one of the things you're gonna have to pay attention to, you see how these holes don't line up now, so I have to make sure before I try to get that cross pin in, I'm gonna put my pinky in there and make sure that those thrust washers line up and that it opens up that hole so the cross pin can go in. Now, the other part of this is Make sure that you know which side you're putting the cross pin in so it can access the roll pin. Since we came out this side, it needs to go in this way. I'm gonna start tapping that in. It's all the way through. Now all I have to do is come to this side, verify that the roll pin hole is open. In other words, this cross pin here can rotate. I wanna make sure that it's open, and it is. So I can take my cross pin, I'm sorry, take my roll pin, get it started. So once you get that started, you can take something else, put it on top to make it easy so you're not trying to bang up that. You're gonna tap that back into place, set it in there just a little bit, where it's supposed to go, and that's it. You have new spider gears, they're installed, and now all you have to do is reinsert your carrier, put your caps back on. So with those being in place, my carrier goes like this, so I'm gonna grab my race from that side, put it over here, race from this side, and in goes, 
the carrier. In goes your carrier. Put your bearing caps back on. Tighten them down. Make sure that you tighten them down to specification. And that's it, you're done.